South Central Alaska is the people part of the state. Two-thirds of Alaska's entire population live within this area. The rest of the state is so vast and vacant, it affords about five square miles to each occupant, as opposed to the most densely crowded spot in the country, where over 322,000 people are crowded into each five square miles. Manhattan, however, is not home to the largest float plane base in the world. That distinction goes to Lake Hood, just outside Anchorage. To get to the best fishing and to enjoy a bird's eye view of this magnificent state, an air charter service is the answer. But before taking to the skies, a little preparation is needed. Mike, I found a good pair for you. Tens? Yes, sir. Okay, just right. Rubber bottom boots are always in style in Alaska, and an air service will readily provide anglers with foot gear and other little comforts. Anybody can do a one-day fishing trip. You don't have to have time. You don't have to plan it. All you have to do is call the day in advance, sometimes even the day you want to go, and we give you a rod and reel and uh, all their fishing tackle and hip boots and lunches. We take complete novices out or experts, spend the day uh, with them or put them out by themselves. And it's really simple. Okay. And we've got one special for you somewhere around here. Poles, like fishermen, come in all sizes. How about that? What is that? That's more for king salmon, that one. Is. That's for those big ones. Big yeah. ones. Okay. Big king. You all set? Let's go fishing. Come on, okay. let's go. Right this way. People respond to friendliness, and we really try to make them feel comfortable, especially since they're flying in small airplanes and maybe they've never flown before. Watch the hose here, Laurie. A float-equipped aircraft is as much a part of Alaska as Mount McKinley. Most of the state would be inaccessible if it were not for these flying wonders, and that's probably why there are 72 times as many commuter aircraft here per capita as in the rest of the United States. Although Alaska's small bush planes may look fragile, they are sturdy and reliable vehicles. Small and tough, the float plane can land just about anywhere there is water. And in Alaska, that's just about anywhere. Within minutes of departing from Lake Hood, the craft can be winging its way towards any one of hundreds of watery spots that are perfect for sport fishing. We cross over the Cook Inlet and look at the offshore oil platforms that are currently producing and pumping oil. And they've been down there, uh, there's about 13 of them, I think. They've been down there since the 60s. Alaska has some interesting contradictions. Modern development and pristine wilderness are found often within sight of each other. Even though times are changing in Alaska, the Bush pilot and his remarkable flying machine will play a significant role for decades to come in the total Alaska experience. Come on, Lori. Let me help you. Give me your hand. Be real careful. There's the next step. There's the last one. There you go. We pull the airplane up pretty close by and there's not much of a shore to walk on. We got to be pretty careful there. because there's bears around and yeah, so we always go down with our little noise makers on our sides or little pistols or whatever. And uh, if the bears come down on the river, we let them go ahead and fish and we leave. Well, okay, we could head up in this way, I guess. It may look like easy pickings, but after hitting the fresh water, the sockeye gets finicky and he's not going to strike at the first lure that comes his way. Avid sportsmen take fishing seriously and deck out with the best salmon rods money can buy. Oh. Oh my I got him! <laughs> the younger set can also enjoy casting with a rod that's more of a toy than a tool. <laughs> Little Laura caught, uh, she caught the first fish down there on a hot shot. Good. Years of experience and fishing knowledge don't seem to matter at this lake. It almost pulled me in. Keep him going, Mara. Look at it, he took that lure. You bet he did. 
Apparently, the sockeye doesn't have the class to prefer a $1,000 rod to a $5 one. Keep her going. Whoa. Hey, he came right to us. Look at that. Look She's at quite that a fisherman. Fish. She, well, she threw, threw that little line out all by herself exactly where I showed her and reeled in as fast as she could. And that uh, big red salmon just grabbed onto that lure. And she had quite a time reeling it in, but she really brought it in. She worked hard for that one. The red salmon, when it's fresh, like the ones that we're catching here, are absolutely aerobatic. They're a beautiful fish. They range anywhere from 3 to maybe 12 pounds, the bigger ones. And they come right out of the water, and they splash across the water. And Trying to catch up to a 9-year-old super angler calls for some serious fishing. Some fish will resort to any strategy to free themselves from the angler's hook, like dive bombing the fisherman. Watching sockeye salmon leap and cartwheel like cheerleaders across a sparkling clear lake and battling to bring them in is a thrill comparable to anything in the fishing world. This little lady seems to know the winning combination for bringing in the mighty sockeye. Maybe her patented style of holding the rod has something to do with it. That one, I think, is the fish of the day.